GPTEL is a simple large language model or LLM client for Emacs. It's asynchronous and flexible, supports persistent chats, many LLM providers and apps, offers an intuitive and mostly uniform interface to them, and tries to be an unobtrusive citizen that's available to you wherever you are in Emacs. That's the preamble. Let's install it and take a look. This is Emacs as it boots up with almost no customization. GPTEL is on Melpa, so we need to add this package archive to Emacs's list. If you use Emacs with any packages, chances are you already got it in there. If you use an Emacs distribution, you definitely have Melpa configured. In our case, I'm going to grab some code from Melpa's website, switch to the scratch buffer, and paste it in. After evaluating this code with MX eval buffer, we can install GPTEL. And we're done. We can start talking to ChatGPT from anywhere in Emacs by calling GPTEL send. If you don't have it in your configuration, you might be asked for an OpenAI API key. While we're at it, let's get the model to help us bind GPTEL send to a convenient key. GPTEL works anywhere in Emacs, in any buffer, but you may want a dedicated chat buffer, and you can bring one up with the GPTEL command. Don't be fooled by the header, this is just an org mode buffer. After sending a request, let's open a second one, this time in markdown mode. And set the LLM provider to Google's Gemini. We can do this from a menu accessed by calling GPTEL send with the prefix argument, that is control U followed by our key for GPTEL send. This package is async. So while that request is going, we can address this conversation about NICs we are having with ChatGPT. Or vice versa. We can save these chat buffers to disk. They're just regular text files. Well, org and markdown files. When we save the buffer to a file on disk, metadata about the chat is written to it. To restore the conversation context after reopening the file, we turn on GPTEL mode. We're ready to continue the conversation. And that's everything you need to get GPTEL running. Access to an LLM, either local or remote, the package itself, and any Emacs buffer. Okay, back to our regular Emacs. Changing the system message or directive is the easiest way to access much of the flexibility of large language models. Not all LLMs support it, but most do. When using GPTEL, you can, of course, set a list of them in your Emacs configuration, but you can also choose on the fly by calling GPTEL send with the prefix argument. Let's look at two quick examples. I'm going to ignore the directives that I have written and pick a crowdsourced one. So I'm going to pick the mathematician directive, which forces GPT-4 to act as a calculator. Uh, let's edit this slightly to answer only with the final result. No explanations. Um, use LaTeX notation inside when appropriate. All right. And it won't start off with a calculation. That looks good. So let's try feeding it a small math problem. 
okay? Unlike before, I'm selecting a region to limit what I send to the LLM. There we go. And that answered correctly. Okay, let's have another go. Once again, I send only the region and I get an answer that looks correct to me. Let's try something slightly different. Ah, not so good with word problems. Anyway, here's a second example. Let's try to get it to act like a dictionary. Let's change the directive to synonyms and antonyms to each. And to make the point that GPTEL works in any buffer, let's use um, the LLM to generate this prompt as well. This time we're going to choose replace or delete prompt so that it's rewritten in place. Let's send it. There we go. And we don't want the examples. Let's just write no other explanation needed. Okay. And let's send only the word. Oh, that's a lot more than two. Let's tweak the prompt a little. Oh, we didn't say two. Okay. There we go. That's how you use system messages with GPTEL. Here's a short description of what the package tries to do. GPTEL's chief goal is to be boring and to fade away into the background of your everyday Emacs use. If you have to give it more than a second of thought to use, I'm failing at this. I'm probably failing at this. Next, don't be annoying. By default, GPTEL does not move the cursor, auto scroll the window, or add any magic behavior. Of course, you can turn these things on if you'd like. It's fully asynchronous, where fully is in quotes because of the limitations of Emacs design. Nevertheless, it tries not to hog the event loop for itself when the responses are streaming in. Uh, you can continue to use Emacs while the response is being added. Redirecting input or output in Emacs is easy, but it's annoying. Jupyter tries to handle this for you. Example, you want to check something quickly and it's unrelated to whatever you're doing in the current buffer. You can bring up the transient menu and then we're going to redirect the prompt and the response. So we will read from the menu buffer and redirect to the echo area and ask a question. There we go. Example, I've been trying to understand this Julia code base and while I know some Julia, this code is well beyond me. So we can ask. If we wanted to ask about a specific function, we could just select that and then send a query but instead let's just send the whole file so i'm just going to go to the end and set our directives so the directive i chose is not quite what i want so i can edit it and say explain what uh, each function in this julia code does to a novice julia programmer and then focus on the ffi and c stuff Okay, now if I send this query, the response will be inserted at point. That's not what we want. Instead, let's redirect the response to a new session, which is just another buffer. And let's name it something like that and go. Okay, so there's the response. So it gives us a reasonable explanation for what each function is doing here. In practice, results from a limited context prompt, like one file, are pretty bad, especially since we're also using GPT 3.5 and not 4. But I find that I can continue talking in this session now and ask general questions because I have no idea how 
for fireworks. Could you give me a primer? Okay, and then it's just going to go do its thing. And once I'm done, I can save this to a file or not. Of course, slinging the query and response around is a very simple and limited kind of composability. If you want to use it in code for more complex tasks, GPTL presents a more general API, which we'll get to in a couple of minutes. Be invisible. There's no special syntax, no dedicated blocks, and no required sessions or buffers. There's nothing to fire up, nothing to remember. Conversing with an LLM is not the goal. Your goal is your goal. GPTL is not there yet, but ideally it should fold comfortably into Emacs flexible structure. And for that to be possible, GPTL should be available in any buffer. Here's an example. In this org document, I have a LaTeX environment that doesn't quite look right because of uh, this really long subscript here, this part. And I don't remember how to put them on separate lines. So let's get GPTEL to do this. I'm going to select the environment and then ask it to rewrite it. Only we need a different directive. So the sum in this environment has a very long lower limit. Split it up into multiple lines. And while we're at it, let's use GPT-4 for this. Rewrite in place. Okay, while it does its thing, we can move around. Okay, that looks like it's done and yep, it's fixed. But this goes further. I did mean any buffer. It's available when you're starting a shell command, for example. Instead of a command, I'm just going to write what I want. And because the mini buffer is a buffer, I can bring up the menu, set the directive. In this case, I do this often enough that I have a directive to generate CLI commands. And then I'm going to turn on replace or delete the prompt and let's send it. There we go. All that's left to do is start the command. And there, that's working its way through. All right, of course, normally I would have checked the command to see if it made sense, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to live on the edge. Okay, looks like the conversion is done. It's even available when you're searching for a function in Emacs. You can bring up the menu and then because this is something I do from time to time, I have a directive where I ask it to return an Emacs command and I'm going to replace the prompt. And there, it found artist mode. Everything in Emacs is a buffer and GPTEL tries to respect that. The surface area of GPTEL is small and it's going to stay small. There are essentially only two commands, one of which has a different prefix argument behavior and the second one, mxgptel, is completely optional. It just opens the chat buffer with some extra flair. gptel tries to present a consistent interface for two measures of consistency. Number one, it tries to offer the same interface to every LLM. This is somewhat tricky because LLM parameters and APIs differ a fair bit, hence the tries to. Example. Here I have four buffers, each set to use a different LLM and provider. Clockwise from the top left, we have Google's Gemini, Mistral AI's Zephyr model running locally, Kagi's FastGPT model, and of course, ChatGPT 3.5. Their behaviors are different. For instance, some of them stream responses continuously, some don't. I have the same query in each written the same way, and I'm going to send all of them at the same time. This may not be a good idea. Okay, here goes. Wow, Whew, I'm glad that held up. Generally, Kage is the best at answering what are essentially web searches like this one. 
So let's take a look at that. Right, it includes references. A side note, uh, these prefixes inserted before the prompt and the response are like most other things about the package customizable. I don't usually use them, but for uh, the sake of clarity in this demo, I added these prefixes. Anyway, coming back to the point, GPTL, any supported LLM, same interface. Second, GPTL send, the only command you need, is available everywhere. In EWW, in L feed, in read-only buffers, in the mini buffer, it doesn't matter. The other features like saving and restoring chats should hook into Emacs somewhat seamlessly. GPTEL does not try to be all things to all users. Instead of adding explicit support for more LLM actions, I already added support for uh, rewriting down here, right? Um, something I probably should not have done. The plan is to lean on the flexibility of both LLMs and Emacs, two very different kinds of flexibility to let you do more with less. Also, there are more generative AI APIs every week. We already have or will shortly have the ability to incorporate images and other documents in the conversation. Even if you could do this privately uh, with local LLMs perhaps, and even though Emacs is incredibly flexible, these won't be incorporated at the cost of complicating the interface. Text is what Emacs does best and GPTEL is going to stay focused on text. This package is configurable and if there's no customization option for something, hey, uh, this is Emacs. You can reach in and change what you want. Here are a couple of the most requested behaviors and how to change them. So when you have this menu open, you can save your preferences with Control X, Control S. This actually works in all transient menus, including in Magit. So you can, for instance, set these to the default and keep them that way. If you want more magic behavior, like making the window auto scroll as the response is inserted, GPTEL provides some hooks you can use. For non-interactive or custom users not covered by GPTEL, you can use GPTEL request, an API that works with any LLM provider that the package supports, and this should stay stable. It can do a lot more than what's in this simple example. This is just to give you an idea. For more information, you can check the README on the project page. And that's all, folks. Thanks for listening.